Is the Focusrite Sapphire Pro 40 still usable in 2024? What's up everybody, it's Rep from the Heights Lab and today we're gonna to be figuring out is the Focusrite Sapphire Pro 40 still usable in 2024? I'm gonna be connecting it to my Quantum with the ADAT or light pipe outputs on the back. I'm really just using it to expand my interface and get an extra eight channels. I actually got this unit from my buddy Cole Furlow. I traded him a sub kick that I built, like the one in my video. I did not have a drum around it though. I just attached a mic clip to his. But these go on reverb right now for about $150. So it's always good when you can trade somebody something and save a little bit of money, especially when it's something you need. I think every studio person could always use a few extra inputs and what's a better way to get them than trading with a friend. So, I'm um, checking a few things out. I've uh, already calculated the round trip latency with everything with my plugins. Um, I would just want to make sure that when I hook this up to my Quantum, I don't have any issues or be in a worse place than I was starting out. I am also using an M1 Mac and it is screaming. I did the round trip latency and it was about 32 samples. That's a pretty low amount of latency considering the plugins I use, so I want to keep that. Um, another concern of mine is the conversion. When I sync them with the ADAT, I know that they will be sharing a clock. The converter in the Pro 40 is the CS4272. It's used in a lot of Focusrite models from that time frame, and it's a pretty good converter. In the past, I've experienced different issues connecting with ADAT, uh, from clock sourcing to... Uh, phase issues with the sampling. Um, so I'm gonna do some rigorous tests. I'm gonna track some drums on both the Quantum and the Focusrite. So let's fire it up and see if it works. All right, so the first thing we'll do is run an IEC cable to it, make sure that it powers up. Once we do that, we're gonna turn the unit back off. Then I've got two ADAT cables that I acquired. Then we're gonna use the ADAT in and out on both interfaces and connect them with the light pipe cable. We're gonna make sure that the units are powered off and Pro Tools is powered off. Hopefully when we do this, the power cycles will help the converters sync even more. I'm hoping that I don't have to connect it to my old laptop, but if I do, I have a MacBook Pro that has a FireWire connection so if I need to change the sample rate or anything like that, I'm pretty positive I can do it in there and it should hold in the unit, then that way we can use it with the M1 Mac because I'm almost positive that no Mac with a silicon processor will probably work with this, um, at least for its driver slash um, control software. And Pro Tools did not see it. I tried power cycling everything, going through the I.O. settings, even got a new ADAT cable. I looked into the control software for the Focusrite and found it needed to be in standalone mode. Then I switched to my MacBook Pro. It has a FireWire port, but apparently had too new of an operating system. Luckily, I have my 2009 MacBook. I was able to load up Mix Control and even set it to 48K. The key to everything really was the standalone mode. Once I had that, all the IOs showed up in Universal Control and Pro Tools. Now it's time to pull everything out of the rack and tie it into the tracking room. I also tested the round trip latency again and it came out the same. I also believe connecting both the ADAT in and out helps with the sync, plus the Apple Silicon. So 
So now it's promised let's track some drums and see if there's any apparent phase issues. If we zoom in, we will see there really just isn't anything out of phase more than average, especially with reflection and measurement errors. I say it's definitely usable if your current setup is fast enough and you have a little help from an old friend, aka an OG white MacBook. Thanks again, it's Brett from the Heights Lab. I got a whole lot more on the way.